right, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> I'll use my, my scalp sign. Um, I guess the first thing, we don't have any public comments this, more, th this evening, so the first thing is team members of the month. Sure. Would you like to give me that? Sure. Follow All right. Okay. So we have two wonderful team members of the month we'd like to honor this month. And uh, this is, again, uh, a wonderful um, sponsorship that Traditional Bank provides for us. It is a $50 gift card this month. This happens to be uh, Amazon gift cards, which are really cool and useful. And a, a hockey puck with the designation of team member of the month. And we've got two great nominees this month, and uh, we're going to... I'm going to read the nomination for the first one, then I'm going to have uh, this person come up. Our first team member of the month is from Western Hills High School, and he is Ryan Hale. I'm going to read the nomination that uh, Mr. Roush provided for you. Um, I don't know if he told you what you were coming here for, Ryan, but uh, it's kept its... <laughs> so uh, I'd like to rom uh, nominate Ryan Hale. Ryan teaches English, English Lit AP... Uh, AP Research, AP Seminar, and Oral Communications at Western Hills High School. Those are some new, uh, a new AP, the AP Seminar uh, that we have at Western Hills. is we're, we're very, very proud of, and Ryan does an amazing job teaching those. Uh, Ryan's not only a phenomenal teacher that holds the students to high standards, but the, he's also the academic team coach as well. The Western Hills academic team not only swept the district uh, last weekend, but also won the full the fall Commonwealth Academic Team League and went undefeated during the season. This team has not lost a match in 11 months. Mr. Hale pushes them as well as holds them to high standards both individually and as a team. And we are blessed that he is one of our, our great teachers and we are honoring him as Team Member of the Month. Ryan Hale. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Our next uh, team member of the month comes from Hearn Elementary, and uh, she's a behavioral interventionist there. Her name is uh, Ashley Malcolm. I want to read the uh, I want to read the nomination here. Loving, kind, flexible, and patient. These are all characteristics of our Team Member of the Month nominee. This teacher has gone through drastic professional changes in the past year. It's our belief that after many years in the classroom, this transition has allowed her to grow both as an educator and as an individual. She now has the ability to impact not one, but all grade levels. This person is someone we can rely on, bounce ideas off of, and seamlessly collaborate with. Even when faced with the challenge, she is honest, realistic, and positive. Her positivity is infectious and can turn anyone's day around, and we need more and more positivity, by the way, than in our society today. Ashley Malcolm's reach goes far, and, and she is making a colossal impact on our students and staff, and we are blessed to honor her as our Team Member of the Month. Go, like the next item on the agenda is a uh, new business and the first item is Family Resource Youth Services Center's mid-year presentation. Uh, good evening. Um, I have asked our Family uh, Resource and Youth Service Center's directors to kind of give a mid-year update. It's recommended as best practice if they kind of update the board um, to let you know what they're doing for our, our kids in the, in the our schools and in the community. Um, family resource is something that came out of the, um, uh oh, I've got to go back three acts now to 1990. Uh, Care, Care. Oh my goodness. I really call it cats. The name of the came assessment. Out. Uh, it came out of Kara, but it was what, what can we do for kids from birth on through? And um, sometimes they're, they're very silent in what they do. People don't realize the amount of stuff that they're doing and they're helping. So uh, they put together a short presentation. And Jill Payne, and she's going to introduce the members that are with us. 
But um, Miss Jill Payne is going to be our presenter, and I appreciate her for taking the lead in doing that. But I'm going to turn it over to her. So as Kyle said, I am Jill Payne. I am the coordinator for the Harry J. Coward Family Resource Center, which serves Elkhorn and Peaks Mill Elementary. So thank you all so much for having us tonight. Uh, I do have three or three more uh, coordinators with me. If you all would like to introduce yourself, you may. I'm Pamela Tate with Joining Hands Family Resource Center at both Hearn Elementary and Collins Lane Elementary. I'm Betty Shepard. I'm at Bonnet Middle School. I'm Western Hills High School Youth Service Center Coordinator. I'm Katie Bouchard and I'm at the Early Learning Village. So those are just some of the coordinators that we have here in the district. So our mission statement, as all organizations have, we have a mission statement. And our mission statement is, of course, along with the states. And it is to enhance students' ability to succeed in school by developing and sustaining partnerships that promote early learning and successful transition to school, academic achievement and well-being, and graduation and transition into adult life. Basically, birth to graduation. That is our mission. <clears throat> and there again, here's our coordinators, as you have already uh, been introduced to some of them, and there's a listing of the other ones. Okay. I'll give you just a chance to kind of peek at them for a minute. Is it still from, from elementary down, or they're, they're called family resource centers, but up uh, from middle school to high school called youth services? Yes, called you services. yes. yes. Yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is exactly right. And so what do we do? Whenever Mr. Sexton asked us to come up with a presentation, we just started to kind of brainstorm, and we were kind of all over the board because we do a lot. Mm -hmm. And these were the top three things that we kind of came down to. We, as coordinators, we remove barriers to help our students succeed. We give hope to our families and our students, and we empower our students and families. As you all know, there's a fine line between enabling and empowering, and we empower. That is what we do. We, we help our families to move on. And our motto, which is also our state motto, is whatever it takes. Whatever our kids need, whatever our families need, we will do whatever it takes to make sure that they get what they need. Whatever challenge it is, we will help them through it. The next few slides you will see some of the services that have been provided just over the last six months. So just actually from July to December. Um, so home visits, that is an array of things whether it's for um, attendance issues, whether it's just to check on a kid, or just to check in on a mom to see how she's doing. Um, food assistance, that number does not count our backpack snack numbers, but as you can tell, that's 109 families for like, food pantry referrals. Uh, school supplies, you all can see the stats. Um, and that, like I said, is just from July to December. So, um, any questions with that slide? Wow. Are some of your pro things that, like for hygiene assistance, mm -hmm. are you all, are those donated or do you all have to go out? Both. Yeah. We have some community members that will donate items and then others that we will purchase through our grants. Are you still bombarded every year with lice? You know, the not as not, not as bad. Uh, you know, when lice is still an issue. That yeah. bugs, of course, is an issue. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things yeah. that we just that we deal with and we help the families as much as we can. Yeah. yeah. So our next slide, uh, clothing, that's always a high number. Um, we have the Green Hanger, which is at Western Hills. It's just a, it's a, it's a clothing store basically where kids can just come in and get shoes or any type of clothing that they might need. Wow. So, uh, and then of course, you know, that number also includes your regular accidents, bathroom accidents, et cetera. So. And then shoes, uh, just this year alone, we've already put 253 pairs of shoes on children. And that number is not included in the bare feet into learning feet. That, as you can tell, is 479 children. That's an event that takes place um, over the summer, kind of July, August. And um, last year it was held at Elkhorn Elementary. And we had 479 kids that came through. And of course, that's a lot of community donations as well. but. You know, shoes is just something that we don't think about as being that huge of a need, but it is. Uh, mental health referrals, as you can see, is 214, and it goes on with health services. 
Any questions with that one? Uh, next slide is our backpack snack program. We currently have 221 students in our backpack program. Um, the food is, of course, housed downtown at the First Christian Church. And then we have wonderful community volunteers who come in and pack the bags and then bring them to our schools. So which save us time and lots of money. So, And then, of course, holiday assistance. We're constantly involved with that, too. <clears throat> we help 656 students with holiday assistance. And there's many different councils throughout Franklin County, and the majority of the councils, as you can see, has at least one frisk rep, if not two frisk reps, that sits on these councils. So that's just a listing of some of the ones. And then, of course, we wear many hats, as many people do. Um, but there again, there's just a small little snippet of some of the programs that we are involved in. The summer feeding sites, um, you know, we just go down there just to have that face, that connection, build that relationship with those, with those families. Um, of course, born learning, that's a great, great workshop and event, back to school events, so on and so forth. And this is just a little, little bit of facts. Uh, the top portion is from the state. Those are just some state stats. And then the bottom portion, of course, is from your Franklin County Frisk. And like I said, that is just from July to December of the amount of contacts that we have had. Whenever we pulled all of our numbers together, we were quite surprised as well, you know? Because it's just something we just, we just work, we just, just do, do it, it. Yeah. you know? Jill, do you all coordinate with, um, I know back when I was in with the Parent Resource Center, mm -hmm. we did, AM, we did a lot of parent workshops throughout the district. Do you, and some we coordinated with Title I. Mm -hmm. Do you all still work with Title I? We do still yes. work with Title I, yes, with different workshops and stuff. Do, and then with Parent Resource, we will advertise for her events. So Okay, good. Yeah. And then with each Frisk Center, we're very unique, but yet we're a little bit different. We have uh, state mandate components that we have to abide by. Uh, so there, that is how we are very similar, but we're different because um, we develop our centers based on the needs assessments. We do needs assessments every year. And so our centers are based on what are the true needs within our school. So we are the same, yet we are a little different. And then this was just kind of a quote that I felt like just kind of wrapped us all up. Um, sometimes it takes only one act of kindness and caring to change a person's life. And I think that's what Frisk coordinators do. You know, we do a lot of behind the scene work. We do a lot of stuff that no one ever knows about. And that's okay, because it's confidential and it's private with a lot of our families. But I do, I feel like that we give them hope and that we just, by being kind, just help them. So. Is there a mentoring program in our district? Betty, don't you all work with some at Bondurant, a yes. mentoring program? Um, Brooke Fowl set that up, mm -hmm. she's got business people in the community. We kind of identify those students who are at high risk and um, connect them with a the mentor. And they sometimes come in and eat lunch. And, and just recently, um, I was contacted, a student needed a bed, and that mentor bought that student a bed. So there's all wow. kinds of things going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes that no one sees. You know, we used to have a mentoring program. Jill, did you was, work with me on that? Yeah, it was Special Friends with Optimus Club. Mm -hmm. And it kind of went dormant for a while, but they are actually revamping it back up, and they're going to start in the city schools and then hopefully get back into the county schools. It used to be that the Department of Education allowed their employees paid leave time to work. I think it was an hour to yeah. a day, I'm not yes. certain, but mm -hmm. do they still do that? I, I'm not do sure you know? Do, 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 do you know? I had a friend several years ago that tried to do that, and she she did it a couple times every day. They had so much paperwork and red tape, her getting reimbursed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Count the time that she just couldn't do it. I wanted to give a little history behind the resource centers. Uh, several years ago when I was in the classroom, one of the organizations uh, with the state YMCA, which I, I program, we're involved in the state YMCA of Kentucky and the youth and government programs. And one of the things that they wrote as a law uh, was to establish resource centers in every county. And it's, amazes, uh, it's amazing to me that uh, our legislature did take that up at the time 
And so that was a great resource that could be in every county. And so I just want you to understand that young people do have some bright minds as well that are willing to get out there and do things to help make Kentucky and our communities a better place. And then I would like to say that I do appreciate the resource centers because there's a lot of things that uh, they do that uh, people don't know about. Uh, you always hear the bad things, but there are good things you do to make kids smile and, and just have a happy day that day. So thank you so much for what you do. And I've learned a lot just knowing that what y'all do yes. right now. So. I don't even think this touches what all you all do. I mean, like, Betty, I, you've worked how long? Gosh, <laughs> years. Years, yeah. I've been since 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I have to and say, Pam has too. Yeah, Pam and Betty has been, I've seen them many times, you know, out after work and doing stuff and doing, and they both are just dedicated. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm, sure. I'm thankful that we've got these two in our system to be able, because they've really made a big, tremendous difference. It does impact those they have a passion. kids' lives. And thank you all. I know there's been many times you all have gone home crying with situations and things that just break your heart. So so thank you, to all of you, for what you do. Well said, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I mentioned, a, I won't say who it was, but a board member actually was contacted by um, someone in the community that had a need just last week and called me. I immediately called <laughs> Kyle, and Kyle said, well, let's contact the the, the FRCs because they, um, they they will they will help and they and they do that's what they do every day so we're blessed to have you all thank you so much all right um, the next item is uh, to review comprehensive school improvement plans so as required by board policy 2.44 the board of education shall review each school's improvement plan attached for your re review are CSIPs for each school no action is required jim is there anything you would like to add to this other than that part of the c bid process which we went through last time is based upon the goals that each of the schools set and we just try to look for ways to get all the arrows going in the same direction okay uh, the next item is the 2020-2021 school calendar. The 2020-2021 school calendar is attached for your review and final approval. The first reading of the calendar was on January 21st, 2020. The recommended motion is to approve the 2020-2021 school calendar as presented. I'll make a motion. Okay, yes. is there a motion to approve? Second. Say, it. Say it fast five times, Larry. I, do. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. Is there any discussion? I know we discussed it when we had the first reading and we thought it was done very well and it's kind of, it was a, I think we heard it's an easy year that there's obvious times for spring break and fall break and. Um, Thanks Kyle and the calendar yes, committee. thank you. All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item is reading of school staffing procedure. After working with KSBA, district staff, and school administrators, modifications were made to the school staffing procedure to streamline allocations. Procedure 02.4331AP1 is attached to review. It's a first reading. It's an only reading. Uh, as a procedure. It just requires one reading with the board. Uh, if you have any questions, I could address those. All right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just looking through here. Are there a lot of the changes are in blue, correct? So, yes, the changes are in blue, and uh, the, the initial one we had some red marked out, but KSBA submitted that back to us. So, what you see in, in blue are the changes. Yes, some additions. Okay. <clears throat> All right, the next item is contingency codes. Attached are two budget reports, and I've got Shane here with us if uh, you'd like to come on up. Uh, an after school program report and a section six allocation budget report. Monies have been budgeted in both of these programs uh, to contingency codes. Money should not be expended from nor transferred directly from contingency codes without board approval. We are requesting board approval to transfer these budgets from non-spendable contingency codes to spendable codes within each respective location and for the program it originates from. The recommended motion then is to approve transfer of contingency codes as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Is there a second? 
Second. All right. So, what, what are we doing here? So when the budget was created last year, there was some money set aside both in the Section 6 allocations and in the after-school programs in the contingency object code. Through my trainings and through other finance officer colleagues, uh, a best practice is not to put money that we're going to spend out of during the year in those contingency codes and to spend from it without having more approval to remove those monies from those budgets. So when we determined that there were some monies in those codes in December, uh, I spoke to the superintendent and we thought it'd be best to bring it before you just to go through the process of approving to remove those monies from those object codes into spendable codes for the schools to use for the after school programs and their section six allocations. Okay, so like next, um, so the next budget that we do, will we not have those contingency that categories with those two? That is correct. Okay. We'll, we'll have the district-wide contingency okay. that okay. we talk about during the budgets, but the, the monies that have been historically set aside in this budget code will, will be in other spendable codes that we won't have to do this. Okay. Makes sense to me. Anybody else? All right, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I just want to thank him to make sure that, I mean, what he's been doing has just been tremendous. I mean, putting us back on the right track, getting everything. I agree. I agree. Great thank addition. You. Thank you. All right, moving on to construction. Uh, the first thing is a train update. Actually, um, yeah, we have Amanda here from Train. She normally has a PowerPoint, but because there's so few things on there, she's just going to talk to you tonight. So, yeah. Um, so everything is finally wrapping up. The last thing we have on the agenda is the controls graphics. So is the district decided to do a hosted server, so that is up. So now my control strip is working on getting the graphics. Once we have that done, we'll do our training with. All of the parties the district decides to put through that six hours of <laughs> instruction, and we're expecting that around the month. Any questions? I don't know how many more times you get to come speak, but I'm on mission. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just one. <laughs> All right. Um, the next item is WHHS Field House Pay Application Number Two. Payout number two for the Western Hills Field House in the amount of $56,720 for your review and approval is attached. The recommended motion is to approve payout number two for the WHHS Field House as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or discussion? All right. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And then the next item is WHHS field house change order number two. WHHS field house change order number two, <clears throat> excuse me, in the amount of $45,080 for the purchase and installation of the HVAC system is attached for your review and approval. This change order amount does not reflect or does not affect the overall total cost of the project. The recommended motion is to approve the Western Hills Field House Change Order Number Two as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. second. Any? second. Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Um. Er, <laughs> Sorry, I, I got uh, Everyone in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, uh, now we're on to WHHS Fieldhouse Revised BG1. A revised BG1 for the WHHS Fieldhouse is attached for your review and approval. <clears throat> the revised BG1 is required to update the project cost to reflect change order number two. The recommended motion is to approve the revised BG1 for the WHHS field house as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Or any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And the next is 
uh, Collins Lane Elementary pay application number 27. Uh, Collins Lane pay app number 27 in the amount of $118,258.49 is attached for your review and approval. The recommended motion is to approve the Collins Lane pay app number 27 as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Are we back to the end of that? We sure are. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in this pay up, John was just talking about. Um, in this, uh, this pay application takes care of uh, weird construction, and uh, some we will have a retainage after this, which is about 5%, so you're getting really, really close to the end. I know when I was talking to John, and he was talking about the field house, that contract of what he's done. And the fabulous job that he's done, he said, you know, this guy is one above and beyond and done a lot of stuff that he didn't even charge for. So, you know, I forgot what the name of that company is. What is the name of that? So Olympic? Olympic Construction. Olympic Construction. And I'm, you know, like I said, I'm very impressed with the gentleman. <coughs> They've done a fine job. I do have some questions I'd like to bring up to the board uh, at this time. Um, of course, Mr. Cobb said that we've been positive, but I'm gonna to have to be a little negative today. <laughs> I don't like doing that, but uh, I, I'm, I have some concerns. Um, I, I think that construct, uh, construction companies will try to take advantage of school districts in a lot of ways. And some of the concerns I have is that uh, we've been charged for and looking at some of the charges that are charging for us, we've been charged for, um, for example, uh, rental of trucks. Uh, I think one bill was $13,000, and, and then maybe another bill was $8,000. Then we've been charged for gas and oil. Uh, I don't know why we couldn't go to the transportation department and get gas and oil, but we've been charged. I think that price was about $8,000. And eight hundred dollars, and I'm just concerned that uh, in these little corners they put things to make up money uh, and do a lot of change orders. And and and, and I thought board that we came to agreement that, uh, and y'all can correct me. I think we came to agreement that they was going to take out the two thousand dollars on the laboratory. If if not, y'all correct me. But it's still in there as a price that we have to pay. So. I'm really concerned about this. I don't know why we have to pay for rental trucks. I don't know why we have to pay for gas and oil. Uh, I think it's unnecessary, and uh, I, I just can't be for paying them right now. Uh, my, if I have to make a motion, I move that we table this and they come back and give us some directions of what's going on with this rental and why we're being charged for rental uh, trucks and vehicles and gas and oil. And, and I want to thank the staff for what they did, because I know there were some things that went on that they had to come back and correct. And if, if the staff hadn't been there to be there, and that might not be good English, but the staff wasn't there to correct some of these things, they would probably got by and we would have to pay in the long run. So I want to thank the staff for that. But I am concerned, board, that we have uh, this, this construction company charging us for things that I did not see in the bid. Now, unless you all have something different. Well, maybe John can clarify that. I think I can clarify that, Mr. Okay. Fletcher. Uh, the original contract sum, if you, um, you should have two sheets that, that look like this. You have a continuation sheet and a sheet here. Uh, the, the price that you were talking about, the rental truck, was on page two of this, uh, this application, the certification. The, uh, the original contract for Weir Constructor, Constructors was $489,507.84. The board approved, instead of having a general contractor, they approved in 2000, whenever before the Collins Lane started, was to have a construction manager. So they're still with, well within their contract, and they did add an additional $10,689.18 uh, for the change orders and the additional work they had to do for those change orders. So they're still within their bounds with, with the addition of that $10,000 for all the change order work they did. And John, I appreciate that. But I have never, and maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe you can correct me, I have never heard of a construction company charging for rental vehicles. They could have bought the rental vehicles 
Why are they charging us that amount of money when they could have gone out and bought the vehicles? I, I just think that's unnecessary. Uh, I think that... Uh, was it a vehicle or a... It was, it was a it truck. Was a, it was a pickup truck, but that's part of their... I'm not saying that it was right or wrong, but I'm just saying in their total contract, that's how they had broken it down, is they spent... Because you guys, you hired a construction manager. You didn't hire a general contractor. General contractor probably wouldn't put that in their package, but a construction manager is to look out for the best interest of the district, and that's where those charges came from. And that was in the initial bid packet. Yes, it was sir. not a change order, right? right. Mm -hmm. okay. I still have concerns, okay? Sure. Uh, I really feel that there are things that the construction company has done that I'm concerned with, and I think it's a lot of little items in here that we don't see. Uh, to make up for profits, but uh, I, I have never, ever heard of a construction company being charged for rental vehicles. And that's me personally. That's just me. Okay. And usually the construction manager is hired by us. That's what the board chose. Okay. Right. And that's what they chose, and so that was his part of his. He wasn't go. You, you know, he had his own. You know, per, uh, uh, rental truck. Right. For the fuel and all that was yeah, part you of his. You can also see where they charge. Uh, there's charges on here for uh, the supervision of the site, which goes to salary and benefits and things that the person they had on site. And they have multiple people there. So, but the main point I was just trying to get through is they're well within that $500,000 uh, with the addition of the $10,000. Um, John, can you address the, um, the sinks that Mr. Fletcher was talking about? Because I think. I remember the discussion very well. It seems like we did have the sinks removed from what we were supposed to pay. Yeah, I'll have to go back and, and, and research that. So that's the $2,000 that the finance department here can, we can ask that question from where. Okay, is there, so I, I think there's a motion on the, ta on, the, on the table to table the discussion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, all in favor of tabling this item until next time indicate by saying aye. I, any opposed? I, yeah, okay. I, mean, so, I was just going to say, that's not negative at all, Mr. Fletcher. I yeah. uh, appreciate you bringing those concerns, and that's something that we'll look into with, with each one of those things that you brought up and hopefully get some answers for you. I appreciate And, and bring Weir back for the, for the next board meeting. Yeah, and I think there's kind of two levels, is what Chuck was saying. One level is the number, the amount, that they're not going over the amount. The other is yeah. the, the scope. You know, we want to make sure they're not saying, oh, well, we're lower, so let's raise it by putting something in that wasn't in the original agreed upon scope. Right. And so we if we can get some answers on absolutely. that, that would be great. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think we're on to reports to the board. The first is superintendent's personnel actions. Personnel actions taken since the last meeting of the board are presented for your information only. And then reports from school councils. Draft minutes from school site-based decision-making councils are presented for your review. And the attendance report. Kyle. I have month five attendance review, which actually ended January the 21st. Uh, we ended with an average of 94 and 88 hundredths, um, one of our better attendance months, and our overall school. Her in elementary. Her so congratulations to her. Uh, I did want to say uh, uh, we're getting a lot of what's our attendance like? What's our attendance like? Um, today we were at 93 and 31 hundredths, which is still good. And last week we were 93 and 83 hundredths for the week. So our student attendance has not been bad. I know some of the counties around us are having some difficulties, but right now we're still holding our own. All right, thank you. I know I saw something about um, uh, substitute teachers, the need for substitute teachers, and I would think that since our kids are coming to school, we need more substitute teachers, and is that something that... Yes, yes. that was a nice article in the newspaper yeah. about that, and uh, Holly is back there somewhere. Um, They've done a fantastic job of hiring subs. We have 134 subs hired, I think, as of the time of the publication. We may have even a few more since then. Uh, it's sometimes, though, as I mentioned in the article, when the economy is good and people are working, it's hard to get subs to take jobs. 
And uh, so that's been one of our, uh, our biggest areas and, and we'll continue to do what we can with incentivizing the working and, and just keep hiring subs. And All right, sounds good. Um, superintendent report. Two, two uh, very important things uh, I want to talk about. One is the district spelling bee. It's this Thursday, and I believe, Jim, it's 515, is that right? right? Yep. 515 uh, here at Central Office. That's always one of the best events of the year. And we have, we have some amazing spellers. And, uh, you know, we, we were blessed last year. One of our, the person who won the spelling bee here last year, if I'm not mistaken, ended up I think third in the state or something like that. So uh, that's that's a great event. We're looking forward to that. <clears throat> and also, as we as we honored our um, family, youth, and re, uh, resource service center folks, this is also a good time to uh, honor and think about all of the counselors. This is National School Counseling Week. So if you have an opportunity, principals, um, obviously make sure that you thank your counselors for the for the endless hours that they put in into helping our kids, uh, both mentally, physically, uh, and academically, or all three of those things. But they do a just a, a fantastic job, and we're blessed with, with all of our counselors. That's all I have. All right, the next item is a month, monthly financial report. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Attached are the December 2019 treasurer report and monthly financial report for your review and approval. <clears throat> The recommended motion is to approve the December 2019 financial reports. Uh, what I will pull up here and read to you, if I can see that the small is um, the balance as of December 31st, 2019. We still have our community bank, a community trust bank account that still has some funds in it. Um, our former bank to the tune of about $501,166.16. Our traditional bank account uh, $28,253,679.10. So our total ending balances for those is $28,754,845.26. So the, again, the recommended, recommended motion is to approve the December 2019 financial reports as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Yeah, I want. How's the traditional been to work with? Have they been fantastic? Have they fantastic? I mean, has it been a problem because they just had one bank? I know that was. One I, I think we've we've had a. They've been so flexible about the courier service that they've provided for us, and I've heard not one complaint. We didn't have any complaints with community trust either. Yeah, I they know were that. Fantastic. I yeah, I know they do. But yeah, them. no traditional yeah. bank has been wonderful to work with. Very supportive of of our schools and our students. So I was. I know we. Were, you know, there was a little bit of hesitation. You know, for, yes. because of that just being a single. But I'm glad it's turned out well. All right. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. And I think we're up to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is presented for your approval. The recommended motion is to approve the consent agenda as presented. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions? Lots of trips. <laughs> that time. All right. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, looks like we're now uh, going into closed session. Yep. KRS 61.810 1K meeting switch uh, federal or state law specifically required to be conducted in privacy. Any preliminary discussions relating under KRS 156.5774D to the evaluation of the superintendent by the board or between the board and the superintendent prior to the summary evaluation shall be conducted in closed session. The recommended motion then is that the board enter into closed session as stated. Is there a motion to approve or a motion to enter into closed session? I'll make a motion and we enter into closed session. Is there a second? Second. Everyone in favor of entering into closed session uh, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? All right, we'll go into closed session.